Hello everyone, welcome back. So in last lecture, we discussed about the development of governing equation. And in this lecture, we'll discuss about the solution of those governing equations, right? And we'll find out the response of the system as a function of time. So this was our system that was simple spring mass system, right? This is K and this is M and this was equilibrium position and we given the x displacement in this direction and we find out the governing equation as mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero. So if we divide this equation by m throughout then we'll have x double dot plus k by m x is equal to zero and this k by m can be written as omega n square so this is x double dot omega n square x is equal to zero and by observing this equation we can say this equation is of shm because from this equation we can say the x double dot is directly proportional to minus x or we can say acceleration is directly proportional to displacement so we can claim that this is the equation of simple harmonic motion of frequency omega n. So here this omega n is equal to under root by k by m is known as natural frequency of the system in radian per seconds. Right. So now we'll discuss about the response of the system. So now we know that this is the equation of simple harmonic motion. So we can assume any solution harmonic solution for this equation. And let's say this is our solution xt is equal to c e raised to power st, right? So here c and s are the constant to be determined. So if we find out the x dot t and x double dot t from this equation, so x dot t is c s e raised to power st and x double double differentiation of this equation gives us c s square e raised to power st so now if we replace the value of x and x double dot in this equation we'll have at the place of x double dot or in this equation we can write m c s square e raised to power st plus k and at the place of x we can write this c e raised to power st is equal to zero because if we say that this is the solution of this governing equation then this solution must satisfy this equation so if we put the value of x and x double dot in this equation from the assumed solution so that those values must satisfy this equation so from here we can get so this will get cancelled out c e raised to power st okay so from here we'll have m s square plus k is equal to zero or we can find out the root of this equation so this equation is known as characteristic equation of this governing equation right so this is characteristic equation corresponding to this governing equation right so this will have two roots because this is quadratic equation in s so we can find out the value of s1 and s2 and those would would be plus minus minus k by m raised to the power 1 by 2 or this can be written as plus minus eta omega n here omega n is equal to under root k by m right so this is the natural frequency of the system okay so these two values or two roots of the characteristic equation also known as the eigen values or characteristic values of the problem so these both of the roots both of the roots satisfy this equation right so the solution of this equation can be written as because both of the roots satisfy the equation then xt can be written as c1 e raised to power 
my eta omega n t plus c2 e raised to power minus eta omega n t because s is having two values s1 is equal to eta omega n and s2 is minus eta omega n and both of the roots are satisfying this equation so the complete solution will be in this form so now we can use the trigonometric relationship of e raised to power plus minus eta omega n t can be written as cos omega n t plus minus eta sin omega n t so if we use this in this equation then we can write xt is equal to c1 and at this place we will write cos omega n t plus eta sin omega n t plus c2 and at this place we will write cos omega n t minus eta sin omega n t so if we further simplify this then we will have c1 plus c2 cos omega n t plus eta c1 minus c2 sin omega n t and here c1 and c2 both are constant and this is c1 and c2 both are constant so this c1 c2 again can be written as new constant as a1 cos omega n t and this eta c1 minus c2 can be written as new constant which is a2 sin omega n t so here a1 and a2 both are new constants so a1 equals to c1 plus c2 and a2 equals to eta c1 minus c2 so this is our response of this system so here a1 and a2 both are determined from the initial conditions so this is the response of the system and constants a1 and a2 are to be determined from the initial conditions so initial conditions means how we start the vibration right at t is equal to zero time because this is the spring mass system and this is in equilibrium so to start with the vibration we have to disturb its equilibrium right so to disturb its equilibrium we can stretch it in downward direction with x and we can release it so it will start performing its vibration about its equilibrium position right so if we stretch it at this place and we just release it so it will start vibrating about this position right and second thing we can do we can stretch it and we can give the initial velocity while it's we are releasing this mass m so this will start vibra vibrating about this position something like this so at the t is equal to zero time we can give the initial displacement or initial velocity or both initial displacement and initial velocity so initial conditions can be defined as x at t is equal to zero time we can define as x naught and velocity at t is equal to zero time can be written as x naught dot right so these are the initial conditions so a1 and a2 can be find out using these initial conditions so if we put the displacement at x at t is equal to zero time as x naught so at t is equal to zero time displacement is x naught so in this equation we put t is equal to zero so and at the place of x t we put the x naught so this is x naught and a1 cos omega n at the place of t this is 0 plus a2 sin omega n at the place of t this is 0 so this term becomes 0 because sin 0 and multiplied by a2 this becomes 0 and this term becomes 1 so from here we'll get a1 is equal to x naught now t is equal to zero time the velocity is x naught dot to, to get the velocity from the displacement equation we have to differentiate this equation with respect to time so if we differentiate this then this becomes x naught 
एक्स टी एक्स डोट राइट डिफ्रेंसिएशन ऑफ एक्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम दिस इज एक्स डोट एंड हियर दिस बिकम्स माइनस ए वन ओमेगा एन कोस दिस इज माइनस ए वन ओमेगा एन साइन ओमेगा एन टी प्लस ए टू ओमेगा एन cos omega and t so this is the equation for velocity so at t is equal to zero time so velocity is x dot at t is equal to zero time is x not dot right so at this place we put x not dot and at t place of t we put the zero so this is a1 omega n sin omega n zero Plus a two omega n cos omega n at the place of t. This is zero. So again, this term becomes zero because sine zero is zero, and this term becomes one. So we can say x naught dot is equal to a two omega n, and from here we can get the value of a two, which is x naught dot or omega n. So now we have the complete solution. so we replace the value of x a1 and a2 in this response equation so we'll have the response equation which is function of time as at the place of a1 this is x not cos omega n t and at the place of a2 this is x not dot over omega n sin omega n t so this is the complete response of the single degree of freedom system right so now if someone ask us to find out the displacement at t is equal to 5 second so in this we can replace the t by 5 and omega n as we know that this is k by m natural frequency of the system so we can put these values initial conditions over here natural frequency at this place and required displacement at the required time we can put the value of t at this place and we can find out the response of the system so if we if we draw this displacement with respect to time right so this is xt in the vertical axis and this is time t so at t is equal to zero time at this point the initial displacement is x not right so this is x not and t is equal to zero time the velocity is x not dot right so we know that the gradient of displacement curve will give us the velocity so if we are giving any velocity so this would be the response like this right so gradient of this displacement curve at this right so this is tan inverse x not dot so this is the velocity and if the velocity is zero then this displacement curve will start like this this will start like this right because at t is equal to zero time the gradient of this curve will be zero because velocity is zero right if the velocity is negative then this curve will start something like this right so here the tangent of this is negative that tan inverse x not dot so this is how we can interpret the results of or response of the single degree of freedom system so in the next lecture we will discuss the another form of the response of the single degree of freedom system and we will discuss the natural frequency how to find out the natural frequency of different system using the energy approach and another method also so thank you